Between 1 and 3% of Earth's surface is covered by peat bogs. They hold nearly 500 metric gigatons of carbon, making them Earth's most efficient, irreplaceable carbon sink. The backbone of almost all peat bogs are sphagnum mosses, a group of highly branched and absorptive bryophytes. Sphagnum mosses have an incredible absorptive capacity due to pores in their highland cells, which give them an important economic role. Each year, thousands of tons of peat are harvested for agricultural use and fuel. With their vast amounts of sequestered carbon and unique biodiversity, peat bogs and their sphagnum mosses are the focus of many conservation efforts. Bryophytes represent the crucial link between green algae and vascular plants and mark an important transition in plant evolution from life in water to life on land. Like their algal ancestors, bryophytes and other terrestrial plants contain chlorophylls A and B, store glucose as starch and grana, have cellulose cell walls, and complete mitosis using a phragmoplast. However, unlike their aquatic ancestors, bryophytes and other terrestrial plants share a number of unique adaptations that allowed them to survive on land. All land plants have a waxy cuticle, or a precursor form, that prevents water loss, stoma that allow for gas exchange, sporopollen and walled myospores, distinct jacketed male gametangia called antheridia and female gametangia called archegonia, and, most importantly, land plants retain the developing embryo within their archegonium, which creates a true embryo. This is why terrestrial plants are also called embryophytes. We will now outline some key characteristics of the three bryophyte phyla, anthocerophyta, mercantiophyta, and bryophyta. Phylum anthocerophyta, the hornworts, have a prominent thallus gametophyte that is anchored to the ground with rhizoids. The upper epidermis of the gametophyte is dotted with male antheridia, which will produce sperm, and the female archegonium, which will produce an egg with a protective venter. Fertilization of the egg produces a diploid sporangium that obtains nutrients from the gametophyte through a placenta, which will connect to the foot and then the stem of the sporangium. This sporangium will undergo meiosis and produce a tetrad of spores coated in sporopollenin. Phylum marcantiophyta, the liverworts, often have a folios gametophyte, but can sometimes have a thallos gametophyte that can appear deceptively similar to the gametophyte of the hornwort. An important distinction between liverworts and hornworts is that the thalloid liverworts, like marcantia, will often have gemme cups on their upper surface. These cups will hold the gemme discs, which will disperse when the liverwort is hit with a water droplet and create clones of the parent gametophyte. Liverwort gametophytes also have barrel pores that are made up of four to five superimposed circular tiers of cells, which allow for gas exchange. Liverworts are heterosporous, meaning that each gametophyte either produces antheridia or archegonia. Water droplets can carry sperm from an antheridium to an archegonium on a neighboring gametophyte. Fertilization results in a developing embryo within the protective venter of the archegonium, which will eventually close to form the clyptra. Mitosis and meiosis will result in the mature sporophyte, which consists of an anchoring foot that connects to the sporangium via aceta. As the ceta grows, the clyptra will burst and expose the haploid spores. Spore dispersal is aided by elaters within the mature sporangium. Phylum bryophyta, the mosses, contain three main classes. Class bryidae, the true mosses, class andriidae, the granite mosses, and class sphagnidae, the peat mosses, mentioned in the introduction. Unlike liverworts, mosses can achieve a small level of vertical growth thanks to specialized conducting cells in the ceta of the sporophyte. These cells consist of an outer layer of leptoids surrounding an inner layer of hollow hydroids. Like their algal ancestors, mosses have a brief filamentous and haploid growth form called a protonema that will bud at any point to produce a ceta stalk. Since most mosses are heterosporous, once these ceta grow tall enough, archegonia will develop on female gametophytes and antheridia will develop on male gametophytes. Like in liverworts, sperm from the antheridium will swim over to the egg of the archegonium and fertilization will produce an embryo within the venter that develops into the sporophyte within the calyptra. Interestingly, once the sporangium undergoes meiosis to produce haploid spores, the calyptra is shed like a shell-like husk to reveal an operculum, or cap, lined with peristome teeth around the sporangium. The release of the operculum exposes the haploid tetrad spores, which can then go on to germinate into new protonema. Moss has long been coveted for the beautiful carpets it creates, and it is the highlight of many Japanese Zen gardens. Because of their natural hardiness and ability to grow directly on exposed rock and sand, many bryophytes act as pioneer species after a natural disaster strips the land of its soil. It is this resilience that enabled the first bryophytes to make the arduous transition from the aquatic habitat of algae onto the perilous land, jumpstarting the explosion of diversity that became Kingdom Plantae.